to Convo Fango. Today we are joined by the director and co-writer of The Northman, Robert Eggers. Yay! Thanks for, thanks for hanging out with us today. My pleasure. So we've got The Witch, The Lighthouse, and now The Northman. If we don't get uh, the Nosferatu at some point, I don't know what I'm going to do, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Back to The Northman. <laughs> So we've got Vikings, Norse mythology, gorgeous sleeping, sweeping landscapes, and it's just, um, it's just so beautiful and brutal, and I feel like it's like an epic in every sense of a, of a, any way that a movie can be epic, it is. So congratulations on pulling that off, because I feel like this was like a major feat to take on, and you just like nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So we've got elements of Hamlet here, but it goes back even further than that, right? Like what you're actually drawing from is like in a Norse story. Can you tell us a bit about the Northmen and the origins? Yeah, uh, I mean, basically, I never really liked Vikings. You know, I used to like get beat up for wearing costumes to school. I was a sensitive <laughs> kid who's like reading Edgar Allan Poe and stuff and like the macho stuff I didn't care for and the right wing misappropriation of Viking culture made me allergic to it as an adult. But I went to Iceland and the landscapes completely blew my mind. You know, they they are inspiring and they can kill you. And, you know, and and then I picked up the sagas and got into Vikings. Uh, two years later, I had lunch with Alexander Skarsgård, who's been into Vikings since he was a kid and said he's been trying for like five or 10 years to make a Viking movie. And but he didn't have a script that he was happy with. So we decided that we would embark on this together. And I brought on, on Shion, who is like this incredible Icelandic novelist and poet, uh, because uh, I mean, I'd be lucky to make any movie with Shion, but you know, because every Icelander knows what Viking saga character they're directly related to. And many people in Iceland today still believe in land spirits and fairies. Like I needed someone who grew up in that to mm -hmm. tell this story with me. So really quickly, I found this story of Amleth, which is like a, a Nordic folktale um, from the Viking Age that uh, a Danish guy in the Middle Ages named Saxo Grammaticus wrote down that a certain dude named William Shakespeare read and said, you know, I think this would make a great play called Hamlet. And so I was really excited because I felt like if I can tell this story that's basically Hamlet, the Lion King, everybody knows this like ultra simple plot, then I can share with audiences on a big film uh, stuff about Viking mythology and religious culture and ritual culture in a way that like uh, I wouldn't necessarily get the opportunity to do on a big film. Mm -hmm. So that 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 is that that plot line that really anchored the piece. I love it. You know, it, the most fascinating part for me, of, I didn't I didn't know if I was really all that into Vikings. I was excited to see this, but I'm like, uh, Vikings has never like been my thing. Sure. And then I watched this and I was like, oh shit, do I like Vikings? But it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was the mythology of it and the ritual and like the pagan elements. And I was like, for me, that was the most fascinating part. And then these people existing in this world where magic just is like everyone just accepts yeah. that so we have that as our baseline and then it just gives you so much room to play and then you did like all this really cool shit with it and i like was living for all of it <laughs> thank you thank you no but that's how i felt too i was like yeah like oh i like vikings like who who knew <laughs> who knew i mean and and and, and you know the mythology is so cool they're incredible poets and, and visual artists uh and you know but then all that macho shit is real. Like, and the, and they, it was like, uh, like a d horrible patriarchal society obsessed with violence, you know? And that was challenging for me because look, like in the context of a, a horror movie, like violence is a different thing. You know what I mean? And here I'm making like an action tent pole movie and the sagas as complex and, and literary as they are, a lot of times they're just kind of like eighties action movies, like mm -hmm. for real. You know, and and I am so I've got had to have times where like the violence is thrilling and exciting and literally entertaining, but also like I don't want to be like glorifying or condoning violence. So how do I tread that line? You know, I'm not, right. I don't know if I did and I don't know the answer to that question, but that's the like that's what me and my collaborators were constantly asking ourselves of, as we were making this this movie, you know, so like, you know, how, when is the brutality like frightening? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, like, instead of cool, like, you know, how do you measure that? 
Right. I don't think this glorified violence at all. I mean, there are parts where the violence is fun and you're like cheering for it. And then there's parts where I'm like, pillaging is disturbing, you know, but it's not in a way that's glorified and it's not in a way that's so disturbing that you're like, I don't want to watch this. Okay, good. (laughs) (laughs) It's just in a way that makes it a more complex story and gives you complex characters and nothing is black and white. So. Yeah, I mean, and that's one of the things that I loved getting the, these sagas is like some like the the hero of the saga that the saga is named after could be like uh, an antihero and, a, and a, an outlaw and a psycho. You know, right. I mean, the way that Alex's character is killing people at night, like that's not OK. It's like not cool with Vikings, you know, right. like uh, and that's really interesting. But on, and also like the villain, like in the sagas is he's a good dad, like and a good husband. Like it's not like Commodus from Gladiator, the King of England from Braveheart, where they're just like stone cold assholes. Right. <laughs> you know, right. like, yeah. It's like, I don't hate you, but I'm not entirely sure I love you, but maybe you'll grow on me. <laughs> sure. yeah. It's that kind of thing, which is fun too, because I'm like, well, I'm, I'm getting to know you through this as well, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> So Shion is like just does such cool shit. Like did Lamb as well, and then also yeah. Dancer in the Dark with Bjork, and then you have Bjork in this as well, playing a really cool role. What like how did that all come about? I mean, kind of how you're a little bit suggesting it. I, I think <laughs> you know, like I'm I'm lucky that Shion and Bjork have been friends since they were teenagers. Uh, Robin Carolyn, one, like the co-composer with Sebastian Gainsborough, he ha- has worked with Bjork and has a friendship with Bjork. Introduced me to Bjork. She introduced me to Shion, like my wife and I have had a relationship with Bjork. So, you know, it became a familial atmosphere for for Bjork, you know, so she was cool to do it and play a Cirrus. And since she is, you know, the pop culture shamaness of the world, (laughs) you know, easy to to play the role. Yeah, that was I was very excited for that part. Me too. Very good. Yeah. I also really love um, Anya Taylor-Joy's character. This this is like a movie of reunions, I guess, because Bjork, and then you're also reuniting with Anya and then Willem Dafoe as well. But and her also, character was cool. Also a movie of witches. I think there's also, like yes. seven <laughs> witches in the movie. And, yeah. and, and you know, I, you know, Viking age uh, is a bad time to be a woman, but a much better age to be a witch than the early modern period in England or New England. So Anya yes. had that in her favor <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. but it's dealt with in such an interesting way too like the, the the type of sorcery i guess that she does i thought was really intriguing and kind of like beautiful as well the story behind that was just i was like this is so i love this like and then, again i'm like do i like vikings do i need to like dive deeper into like norse mythology like you just opened up a whole new world i, I mean look, i mean i you know i don't know what your like total thing is i know <laughs> that you're like you know with fangoria but i there is definitely like uh like a goth occult like nordic pagan religion crossover mm-hmm. For sure, you know, like I, I, you know, I've definitely known my fair share of black clad, like hipster adjacent goths with (laughs) Thor's hammer necklaces, you know, so uh, (laughs) like it it, it fits. It fits. Did you just call me a hipster adjacent goth? Is that what you're suggesting? (laughs) I called myself that, but okay, okay. The bill. I don't know. Uh, All right. I mean, I grew up as a Poe kid too. And I think you just kind of like, you just called me out a little bit. I'm like, okay, yeah, you just described everything I love. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) we're cut from the same cloth. Shocking. I'm sure. I mean, that's what I assume. So, yeah. (laughs) So this isn't a horror movie, but it does have a lot of horrific elements, a lot of horrific scenes, and there's some great gore and really awesome effects in this. Thanks. Was it important to you to do a lot of practical effects? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's like a good deal of CG in the movie and more than I ever had. Uh, like, and some of that's just like, you can't make a movie of this scale mm-hmm. with modern health and safety and like uh, unions and and the cost of labor. You can't, you know, Cecil B. DeMille's Joan of Arc, you can't make a movie like that anymore, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but but yeah, I mean, you, I try to do everything practically and, uh, and, and, and then if there needs to be like fixes or enhancement with CG, uh, it's a wonderful tool, but, uh, but, you know, but also like, you can't, uh, like, yeah, I mean, like COVID also made us have to do a little more CG than I would have wanted because 
we couldn't shoot in Iceland as much as I wanted because of COVID. So sometimes, you know, our foreground and midground is like stuff we're shooting in Ireland. And then the, the, the background is a plate shot uh, from, ah. from but, you know, which is not a sin and it, everyone does it, right. but it's not really how I like to do things. But okay. I, no, no choice you said it so guiltily right now too like you're like making a confession i'm like no that's fine yeah you know but it is, it is fine but it's not how i prefer to, to yeah do. okay i mean it still looks gorgeous it looks like i'm like oh this is iceland i'm looking at this is wonderful yeah <laughs> and i really like you like i feel like you really showcased it i don't know which shots were ireland and which shots were iceland but i feel like there's just again it's like these sweeping shots and it's just like a, a caravan walking by but it's like this huge wide shot and you can just see like the landscape and you get a sense of of where you are and the place and the time and it just is really like for world building purposes it was awesome awesome yeah well those yeah those big those big shots like that are all are all in in, in iceland mm -hmm. nice there's also a really cool battle scene and i know it's like i think you said you maybe did some digital cuts like invisible cuts in there but it just Either way, there's very long takes, but there's so much happening that I'm just wondering like how that all came together because there's so much action then coordinating that with camera movements because the camera's not still while this is happening. Just so much stuff coordinating together. Yeah, I mean, it, it becomes a, a dance. It's sort of like shooting a musical with a lot more blood. But the, uh, I mean, it just takes, I mean, it takes a ton of planning, man. Like it takes a ton of planning. So, uh, you know, we're, we're storyboarding and working with uh, CC Smith, the stunt coordinator, and, you know, and we're like, you know, I, I wrote it, you know, and then Jared and I start storyboarding it with a storyboard artist. And then CeCe's coming in saying like, a horse is never going to do that, you know, and <laughs> like, all right, uh, well, how about, you know, how about this? And, you know, and then, and we, you know, we built the village from scratch to be designed to do this long shot, in, you know, and constantly like moving, like, like before we built everything, like move, you know, taping out where every house and like shed would be and moving it like slightly to make sure that we could see everything from every angle that we needed i mean it's you know it was uh with that many like extras and stuntmen and horses and pigs cows chicken children <laughs> geese like you know it takes a tremendous amount of planning you know everything that you're ever warned to like not work with in film school right like children and animals and you're like now we're gonna have hundreds of each of those in this one <laughs> totally yeah and 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 yeah we did and the boat work was fun too elsewhere you know yeah, yeah. but all that stuff pays off so well though because i'm just watching that and i was like what the shit like it was like wild great great yeah. amazing um let me see oh was it difficult to get the dialects down because there's multiple dialects happening and i'm just wondering how that was for the actors to like just be able to handle yeah it. i mean i think it's tricky right like i you know if only i was as rich as mel gibson and could self-finance my own historical epics and just do it in old norse and old and old slavic that would have been great but that was not permissible so i had it's like do i have like american vikings british vikings uh, everyone shows up with their own accent or do I try to like create some accents, mm -hmm. which, you know, and by the way, I don't really like any of those choices, but the fourth <laughs> one is sort of seemed li like the best option. Uh -huh. So, you know, so the, you know, the sort of Viking characters, we created this Nordic accent for them. And then, you know, and then, and they do speak in old Norse in ritual settings and, and, uh, you know, but, and then, you know, we worked with a Ukrainian poet on creating this like proto-Ukrainian language um, for uh, like Anya and the other Slavic characters. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, a, a, a new, another challenge, but, uh, yeah. but luckily Anya is really good with uh, language. I love it. I mean, I don't know what your ideal scenario was, but it comes across again with like the world building and then the fact that you used Old Norse and there's like songs and rituals happening with that. It adds to like those magical elements of of that part of it. And it's just like, awesome. oh, I'm in this magical realm and there's Valkyries and there's all these crazy things happening. So <laughs> it may not have been your ideal, but I think the audience is going to be like, yeah, we're here for it. Well, you know, yeah, but I think better than the whole movie subtitled in Old Norse for a film this size. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, there's a lot happening and you got to read it also. So it's like it's a lot going on, <laughs> which I don't mind. But I do hear people complain about subtitles. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I'm a fan of it. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we go about The Northman? Uh, you really should see it in uh, in a movie theater.
Yes, I, uh, I will second that. You know, I mean, I think even just for the sound, mm -hmm. because you can't really experience like being on the, the Viking ships if you can't like hear it, the waves crashing, uh, you know, the volcanoes erupting, like you got, uh, you know, it's, um, I, with COVID and everything, it's hard for me to like, to, to, to always go to the theater. I, I admit, I admit it. And I'm like a filmmaker. And I like want movie theaters to survive that sometimes I'm like, I could probably see that one at home. Yeah. You know, but, but like, you know, I went to see June in a theater. I went to see Batman, the Batman in a theater. And, you know, you should see this in a theater. Yes. There, there are certain ones where I'm like, this is just, it really lends itself to a theatrical experience. You're going to get a lot more out of it. This is one of those. <laughs> awesome. All right, The Northman in theaters April 22nd. And also, if you're hungry for more Eggers, obviously you are. Check out The Northman interview in Fangoria issue 15. Look at, have you seen this yet? No. Yeah. No, cool. there you go. There you, there it is. Awesome. I mean, that's not you, but there's your article. There's your interview. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, thank you so much. Can't wait for everyone to check this out.